Welcome to the Ignite Your Life podcast. Here we interview successful people who are living a life filled with adventure, excitement and fun. Learn where they've been. Explore where they are going. See what gets them out of bed in the morning. Find out what drives them. We will go through their lowest points and we will look at the opportunities and possibilities that are now presenting to them. Come on a journey of ignition. I'm your host, Leanne Blaney. For more information, go to ignitepodcast.com. Let's ignite. Andrew Holt writes books for children of all ages and is a primary school teacher, yoga teacher and a mindfulness trainer. He has travelled the world working with parents and children from many cultures. His experiences have brought him to the conclusion that wisdom isn't just for old folks. Kids have their own valuable perspective on the world too, if we would only give them the space for them to explore. So it's his mission to open the world for these wise kids and have as much fun while doing it as he can. He has visions of many books from promoting self and social awareness and responsibility in the future and taking steps to create an online school. Hi, Andrew. Welcome to the Ignite Your Life podcast. Oh, hi, Leanne. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'm really excited to share your story. So shall we get started? Yeah, that, that sounds great. Excellent. All right. So do you want to tell us a bit about where you are now? What's actually happening for you right now? Well, it's quite an interesting situation I'm at at the moment. I'm actually currently teaching in a remote um, Aboriginal community. Um, not, uh, it's 160 k's northeast of Tennant Creek in the Northern Territory, Wagyala community or Rockhampton Down Station. Um, it's a one teacher school turning into a two teacher and I'm here for six months, maybe even 12 months. Yeah, I took on this position to sort of, I needed the space to finish a few projects and also to trial how I'm running a classroom through positive psychology, which we might talk about a bit later. Yeah, yeah. That sounds very interesting. So what's your actual story? Where have you been to get up to this point? Well, where do you begin? <laughs> <laughs> right back at the beginning, I, I grew up, I don't know, I, I've always been inquisitive about learning and about culture and I grew up in a country town called Young, um, spent a lot of time on my grandfather's sheep farm and, um, yeah, and so I had that love of being on the land and, uh, of that and then I was always thirsty to try something different so I well I, I went to university and became a, a school teacher and during that process um, I think you know my third year was offered a position that we could go overseas to practice teaching now as a teaching practice and I thought wow this is one way I can go overseas and so I went over to Indonesia and we taught English as a foreign language there's eight of us that ran a summer school then also in a a classroom and that was a huge cultural shock for me you know to go to a Muslim country from when there was you know not many other cultures in my home mainly Anglo-Saxon background in my country town so and the biggest thing for me was oh my gosh these people are the same as me so so we you know it's funny how you think when you're young uh, but so and then I grew up and um and my first, well, then I went and had my first position in Canberra as an ESL Indonesian teacher. And I think early on in my career, I had to make sure my Indonesian teaching was real and meaningful for the kids, for them to get it, you know, because it was in a context that none of them had been to Indonesia. So I look at it now and that was so some of the seeds for where I, where I am today. And that was 23 years ago. My passion now, I don't know when to drip into this, when to start part, part of my story now, which brings me to the present day of is creating space for kids to shine. You know, after working in Indigenous communities, working with gifted and talented kids um, in many locations throughout Australia and even in the UK, um, yeah, I've come to the uh, understanding that, you know, we need to create a space for kids to shine. And, you know, but in doing that, um, we also need to give them the tools and tips for resilience and practice stress management tip techniques at an early age through what I've come to learn from mindfulness and other different techniques that I've learned on my journey from my own personal life as well, thinking, well, I wish I had this when I was younger. So that inspired me to step into, um, you know, creating the wisdoms that I've learned for myself, but also um, what I saw was missing in education into not only my classroom, but also to step further into a, a children's rhyming book, which I released in 2015. 
Yeah. So there was a number of, uh, yeah, a number of things in my life caused me to question and need those relaxation tips myself <laughs> from moving when I was in the Kimberley to Darwin um, and the job wasn't, particularly the first job I went to, I didn't particularly uh, enjoy and I ended up quitting. And so I was in a bundle of stress then and looked and, and that's when I discovered yoga and just uh, discovered um, Reiki, which I didn't know anything about energy up until that point. And you mentioned a couple of projects that you're doing out there. Is it uh, like a thousand ripples? That's obviously how you've come along here to the podcast and interview. Do you want to tell us a bit about your projects? Well, yes. From the the book um, called "A Wise Apple Tree Helps Me: Top Tips for Wise Kids." From that program, I didn't want it to be a, a. So from that book, I didn't want it to be a book that would just be a nice read and go back on the shelf. I wanted it to live. So that has a, it's also written as a journal as well with space for children to create their own reflections after each question on each page. But I wanted to step further. So I created a program called the Wise Kids Hero Quest. And all throughout 2017, I ran workshops on the Sunshine Coast. Um, even at the beginning of this year in January, I was down in Bega in New South Wales where my sister is. And kids go through a mod- series of four modules of um, stepping into their strengths and becoming a leader. We do it through a, um, a symbol of making a staff where they embed designs and even gemstones into that staff as a symbol of leader. Because, you know, a queen and king have a scepter to rule their kingdom. Well, how are you going to rule your kingdom and what are you going to step into? So we look at that as well as making posters and resources and things that they go and put in their environment to help them on their journey. And in doing so, it's actually helps parents as well, remind them how they need to be for their own children. The program, and that's a series of things that I use in my classroom as well. The book actually is going to be a series of seven that I've got in mind based on what I've understood of my yoga teacher training of ancient wisdoms and also from other areas in my life when I've reflected on psychology of learning and, and, and some ancient books that I've read. And it's just integrating that into modern context. Um, and the book, the first book is on um, being grounded, watching your mind, um, being grateful and things like that and coming up with a project, what do you want to create? And the second book is about, which is going to be released this year, is called A Wise Water World Inspires Me, Tops Tips for Wise Water Kids, and that is about your emotions. The character goes to a water theme park and there's weather and it's all an analogy to how you respond when you're feeling a particular an event happens to you, what's your program that you're responding to um, and how can you tell emotions in other people as well? So that's an interesting little rhyming book. So why rhyme? Well, we remember rhymes easily, little ditties and rhymes. And mm. if you don't like mine, you know, there's a well, not necessarily like mine, you can create your own. So I create space for, I delete words and so kids have ownership of it where they can create aspects for themselves. Yeah. So that's what's inspiring me to continue in the next book will be uh, the third book in the series will be about more empowering and empowerment which is interesting enough i envisaged when i wrote the first draft in 2012 that i would be i was thinking about the center of australia the strong sun and the and look where i am now <laughs> like <laughs> what what's going what's happening in life and then when i wrote the the book about water i've been living on the sunshine coast and had you know there's so much water, there's lots of access to waterfalls and beaches and things uh, and lakes so what's going on? <laughs> like I've had plenty of life experience and um, about some of that to share along the way. Yeah, it's awesome. So what about a tipping point for change? Was it when you decided you didn't like that job or have you had a number of tipping points for change? Um, yeah, there have been a number of tipping points for change. Um, I wouldn't say one. Well, that was a large one, the one I mentioned before, but also um, I took a break from teaching and went to Brisbane and um, studied kinesiology, which is understanding where the energy points are in the body and how you store it based on, um, you know, the chakra system from the Indian system or from also from Chinese medicine, uh, where different points in the body, what they mean and how you're holding that energy pattern. That's the very simple basics of it. Uh, It's about understanding that. And then while I was doing that, I taught in over 200 schools in Brisbane as a relief teacher doing small contracts or day-to-day work. And I just really saw how stressed everyone were, you know, the teachers and the kids and 
I was just like, oh gosh. And so I then, that was like a, like a rumbling, you might say, to a change as well, and part of an inspiration to a book, perhaps of a motivating to how I can help on a larger scale. I did go to India in 2011 to investigate different relaxation tips. I thought, well, I'm going to go to the place where it comes from, all these meditation tips. And so I went there and I went to a couple of different places and experienced different things and um, for myself and just as an experiment on my own body and how it felt in different places. So that was really interesting to reflect that on as I developed the program. And, and then in 2015, I actually went to Canada, which was part of a, a yoga organisation and did my teacher training there. But also I combined that with going to a mindful schools conference in America and I managed to read my book out on both of those occasions to people. And I've had counsellors, psychologists and, you know, thera um, family therapists and even um, foster agents. Really interesting, uh, interesting in the book on how when you read it as an adult, you are reminded how you need to be for your child just as much as it is good for the children to read it and get into those good habits when they're younger. So... Um, I frustrate, and I've been to the Yamundi markets on the Sunshine Coast. And I came back, and the different tipping points there was meeting people from all around Australia who go to the Yamundi markets, and even internationally. And people saying, "Oh, you need to get this book out," and oh, I'm so glad you've written it. I've had kids res respond um, with, oh, is, you know, keeping it under their pillowcase, wanting to read it over and over. It's like, oh my gosh, that sends you goosebumps. And yeah. Wow, you believe in your own work, but when you get the feedback from that, yes, it's just like. You get, you know, um, you get tears, I guess, in your eyes and you just feel, wow, it's all that hard work is worth it. Yeah, yeah, and no, that's fantastic. So have you had any challenges along the way that made you feel like throwing in the towel? Um, yes, definitely. The, book, the first book, I wrote it in about 2012 and then I published in 2015. So I had three years of self-doubt and self-belief because I actually couldn't afford an illustrator. So I actually taught myself to illustrate. And so I, my mind, my own mental thing, and so this becomes, is part of the example in the book, of, in the book on uh, the third chapter, we talk about poisonous thinking and fertiliser thinking. We poison our best self by what we think, say, or do, or we fertilise it. So are we, how do we become aware of that? And so I used to say, I'm dumb and stupid at drawing. I'm no good at drawing. Oh, gosh, look, even the kids in my class can draw better than me. <laughs> and, but, you know, I had to get over that. And it wasn't until a, a parent um, said to me, she said, Andrew, you complain about the children in the class not doing their best or trying because they want it to be perfect straight away. What are you doing? You know, you're, what are you modelling? Now, here's $50 towards getting it published. Now, go and get it done. <laughs> this is my way of giving you a friendly nudge, you know. And so with that encouragement from a number of parents who were in the class I was teaching at the time and with some friends and, you know, I did persist even through those self-doubts of my book. And, yeah, and it. And now um, it's not, you know, each cartoon's not particularly anatomically correct. There's, there's quirkiness and that is the fact that that's the lesson I want children to look at that and say, well, you know what, if this guy could do that, what could I do? Yeah. So talking about the message you want the children to get, do you have a big vision? Is that what keeps you putting one foot in front of, in front of the other? Yes. Um, my big vision is, um, yeah, to provide a space for children to, I think I hinted it before, for them to create, make and investigate their heart's desire um, and supporting them through tools and tips that we can share with them how they can do that when they're on their up and down on their journey, on their wave of life that we're all on um, and how do we cope when we're down. The, and if we have, if we're in the down times, if we have a few little tips and tools that can get us through, then or not let us stay down so long before our uprise, you know, and just know that that's part of the process. Um, and my vision is to create an online school for that eventually, using the material that I've got as a basis. Videotape the workshops that I've done in the past, um, so, um, so whether schools can have access to that or, or into, around the world or, um, that's the, or locally or parents homeschooling and things like that. On It's all about self-awareness, self-responsibility and social awareness and responsibility, which relates to the National Australian Curriculum as well. That's fantastic. 
So all these things that you're looking forward to doing, what new possibilities have actually opened up for you by doing these books? That's the, that's the sticking point at the moment. And my job is uh, like I think I need to learn more about marketing because I have got a product that I know people have been on the ground and saying they really love. Um, it's, so the next step is for me is to get it out further as much as I can and to learn how to do that, you know, to learn how to work marketing in this day and age on, on social media and what, I don't know which is the best technique. So, yeah, it's, I'm not quite sure where the next step is. On, I know it's still going. I'm open to it, but um, part of coming out here, I think, in the, in the big picture of things, is being grounded in what I am creating at the moment and what is to come. Because there's, there's so many different projects that I'm touching on. You know, it's how you run a classroom, mm. you know, which could be a, a, a structure that you can look at for new beginning teachers, you know, through positive psychology and detecting, getting kids to be detectives for what they want to see. It's, you know, the books that I have. It's the program that I run. It's, and when you're only one person doing it, how do I create a team in the future to create that? Mm. So um, I'll just put it out there. What is, you know, marketing and how do I create a team to get the next vision forward? That all sounds very exciting. Do you have other exciting stuff that's coming up in the future? The exciting stuff is on the ground at the moment. What I'm creating with uh, children, I'm getting them to what's meaningful for them is their local bush tucker and uh, getting them to go out and bring take photos and let us create a book together or with some members of the community for that community or the community which only has six houses, whether we might, I don't know, this is something that I'm working towards and may, may or may not happen, but for each house to tell their history, you know, their family history or something and call, create a little book for just that history for that community and what their knowledge is and remembering for future generations. So that's more of immediate on the ground, integrating into what I'm doing in the classroom. Mm. Yeah, no, I love that. All right, so let's have a change in pace and let's do the speed round. Okay. All right, do you have a favourite book? Um, apart from my book, because <laughs> I put so much blood, sweat and tears in it, it was like a baby um, being birthed. But um, one book, apart from that, um, one book really changed my thinking, was given to me years ago, it was an autobiography of a yogi. It really changed my perception of a reality of how things could be. It's a mm -hmm. book written by a, a yogi in the 1950s, I think it was. Mm. Um, so that really inspired me. Yeah, yeah, wow. What about a mentor figure that's helped you the most? There's a woman on the Sunshine Coast that helped actually get me over the line through my belief systems to get that, you know, to get the book published and printed the first book. And I wouldn't have done it without um, Jean Sheen from Millennium Education just by how she's done and created her online, um, well, not online, but it's her workshops, her business and um, that she runs for people in her. She's a medical intuitive lady and, um, and she, yeah, she teaches. She's got a love for children as well. And so that's what drew me to her in the first place. But she also did a bit of coaching or mentoring, actually, for mm -hmm. a month and managed to get me to print the book the night before I flew out overseas. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was able to take those, you know, you know, about 40 books with me. So she has inspired her, so I'm very grateful for her and her help. Amongst, you know, I can go back to my childhood with my grandparents and um, the lives that they've lived that i learned from the history is that. Mm. Yeah. What daily ritual works best for you? Um, my daily ritual is getting up early. Um, it's when I work best or I get inspired when everything's quiet um, and, yeah, journaling and writing down my thoughts, getting a lot of it out of my head. Um, I haven't always been successful in doing that, but I, I, go, I go back to that if I suddenly go, oh, yes, but it's a daily thing that I need to encourage myself. And when I do that, it works really well and alongside a meditation practice. Yeah, yeah, journaling is very powerful. Do you have a favourite food? I quite like the simple food when I was over at, like, since India. Oh, actually, no, um, quinoa porridge. Oh. <laughs> so I make every morning I have, a, a, like, a, a flaked quinoa porridge and I put some cardamom and fennel and cinnamon and I, sometimes, and I just create what I have. Like, I might have some apples or some dates or some dried fruit and that goes in with an odd nut or two. So <laughs> mm -hmm. that's what I love having every day. 
Yeah, great start to the day. Do you like the country or the city? Uh, country for sure. I'm a yeah. country boy art and I love nature. So, um, yeah, that's city's good for a visit, but country's where my heart is. Yeah. What's the biggest piece of advice that you could give to, to others to help them make change in their life? The, uh, yes, the biggest piece of advice I can give to help others to make a change is um, focus on acting what you wish to be the example of. So if I want to be more kind, then I focus on doing more kind acts. What is the quality that I want? If I want to be more brave, what, am I, what fear am I facing to become more brave? Um, and how can I be? And by doing so, I'm an example for other people to do the same. Um, I did, for example, we took kids down when I was teaching on the Sunshine Coast to Nambo and we did random acts of kindness. We gave, gave gifts to the police force. We went to Meals on Wheels. We old retirement, old people's, I was like retirement village. Um, we went to the main street and we had people in tears getting flowers and that the parents had brought in as well for the kids to give and little bookmarks we'd made. So, yeah, and that, a couple of, some feedback from parents at the end of the year that, really significantly changed some of their children's perspective because they actually were the change that they were wanting and so they became to integrate that into their life oh that's beautiful i love that we need lots more of that i'm sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> it should be a part of a uh you know well i don't know a part of a, a school thing every well, everyone should do there are programs around we're in kindness programs I think there's one in Melbourne called the Kindness Ripple Effects or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that. All right, last question. If you had a time machine, what would you go back and do differently or tell your former self? To have that self-belief, you know, stay focused on what you believe in and have that self-belief and have the courage to speak your truth. Not hold back, but just speak your truth about what's, what are you wanting to create. Yeah, and not so much so pleasing other people. Yeah, I like that. So thank you so much for your valuable time today, Andrew, and sharing your story with us. Would you like to give us the best place to contact you? And we'll end it there. Um, the best place to contact me at the moment is on my author Facebook page, which is Andrew Holt, um, educator author. Or you can send a message through my website on www.andrewgholt.com. Yeah. And I, yes, and look for, you'll be able to see when the upcoming release of the book is this year um, on for emotions and going with the flow. Um, yeah, I'm quite excited about that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Well, thank you very I'm much. Hope, yeah, I'm hoping to, this little insight, <laughs> I, I don't know whether it'll pull off, but I'm hoping to be able to create something to go to wet and wild on the Sunshine Coast to match up with the story like it goes in. So we go through the emotions and fear and, Things and having fun at the same time at, at Wet and Wild. So I'm, I'm yet to talk to them and see if I can create that, but just watch that space. Yeah. And you might like to join us at the end. Oh, I think I would. <laughs> They're not far away, so yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Andrew's story of being inquisitive about learning and culture from an early age to now writing books for children with a great mission is so inspiring. His vision to create an online school is awesome. If you want to contact Andrew, go to his Facebook page, Andrew Holt, Educator Author, or his website is andrewgholt.com. If you want to learn about having a big life full of adventure, energy, balance and fun, get on my website, leanneblaney.com.